common sound all over the nation, all over the world. The marching cadence of Uncle Sam's fighting men. This is a brief account of one unique group of them. Americans with Japanese faces and Japanese names. Yamamoto, Tanaka, Kanazawa, Sato. They're members of the Japanese-American combat team, formed by special order of the Secretary of War early in 1943, made up entirely of volunteers. Some of this select group is from Hawaii. The rest are from the mainland. Many of them volunteered to fight when they were behind the barbed wire enclosures of relocation centers, where they had been moved in 1942, soon after the outbreak of war. They volunteered to fight for the land of their birth, the adopted land of their parents. The Hawaiian boys gave the combat team a motto, go for broke. It's a gambler's term. It means shoot the work, go all out, do or die, go for broke. These pictures show the Japanese-American combat team in training. Some of them after only a few days in uniform. But already they have the spirit of go for broke. These boys look like tough fighters. Aren't you glad they're on our side? Learning how to use a bayonet and a rifle is part of the primary training of almost every soldier, especially an infantryman. Along with it, he learns how to throw a hand grenade and how to protect himself against gas. In a gas mask, all American soldiers look alike. Then, more advanced training. This crew of a 37 millimeter gun is hitting the keynote of the American Army. Teamwork. Coordination, instant response to command. Drill, drill, drill. Always under the critical eye of an experienced instructor until every move is as instinctive as breathing and every piece of equipment is as familiar to each man as, well, as familiar as the picture of his best girl. These men are getting acquainted with a machine gun. About the first gun they've actually fired. They start on an older model but it uses real bullets and makes plenty of noise. One crew takes the gun while the rest of the company watches, then change position. Every man knows every job in the crew. Gunner, number two man, and the observer back there by the stump. Advancing across an open field. Field training is one step closer to readiness for actual combat. This infantryman and his buddies carry their own weed patch camouflage on their helmets. The artillery, too, moves out on a field problem. The men riding in troop-carrying trucks. The caissons don't go rolling along anymore, for the ammunition rides in the trucks with the men. Those howitzers behind the trucks are full of destruction. And these Nisei, as this group of Americans is called, are learning how to use them. The engineers are learning about camouflage, and they resort to piggyback to drape the camouflage net. The anti-aircraft guns are camouflaged, too. This is only in practice. But one of these times, these American soldiers may be bringing their gun to bear on an enemy plane. Digging an emplacement for a 37 millimeter field gun and doing it in a hurry. And still more camouflage, so the gun will be concealed. And then the gun goes into position, ready for use. Every man knows his job and all the other positions in the gun crew. And he's learned it by putting out just a little more than he had to. And the machine gunners have graduated to a big 50 caliber machine gun. Powerful, hard hitting, yet easily moved by its crew and thrown into action in a hurry. The engineers start out for a field problem. In this case, a river crossing. That's why they use the amphibious jeep, which travel in water as well as on the land. And the ordinary jeep, which can do almost anything but swim. There's a tradition of the Army engineers that they are the first to arrive and the last to leave any scene of battle. And the combat team has its own unit of engineers. And there's one of the amphibious jeeps in the water. The men are on a reconnaissance mission to study the river, the speed of the current, the depth of the water, and to locate a spot on the opposite side where an anchor can be established. The reconnaissance crew returns now with its data gathered in a hurry thanks to the equipment they had available to use. They make their report. The crews are already organized. The orders are given. And now watch these boys go into action. There's no time wasted and no lost motion. Stakes and ropes were set for the anchor on the near shore. But it's taken some training for them to know just which stakes 
and which ropes go together, and where, and why. A rubber boat carries a detail across the river to establish an anchor for the bridge on the opposite shore. Even for a simple bridge, it takes some good engineering and some husky manpower. The pieces for the pontoon units were brought by truck, and the detail unloads them in position where another detail can assemble them quickly. That takes planning, organization, training. As each piece is assembled, it goes into the water, and section by section, the bridge grows across the river, one and another and then another. The men work only in the shallows near the shore, and the bridge floats over the deeper channel. The sections lie firmly to make a sturdy crossing. In only a few minutes, it reaches the opposite shore. And when it's done, the fighting engineers take up their rifles and cross to hold the bridgehead. Oh, the double quick is too slow for these boys. They move at a dead run. Up the hill, deploying through the woodland. If they ever have occasion to fight in jungles, they'll be ready for it as a result of their training at Camp Shelby, Mississippi. The officer receiving the message here is one of the highest ranking Nisei officers in the combat team. He's a captain, commanding officer of the engineers. He's a good engineer and a good soldier. Just in case the enemy should counterattack, it's the engineer's job to help stop them. One way to stop a tank attack is to drop trees in the path, and the quickest way to drop a tree is to blast it down, as these engineers are doing using a belt of TNT around the trunk, under the instruction of a Nisei sergeant. And then a wire to connect with the detonator. One for the money, and down It's important to know how to destroy a roadway that the enemy might want to use. And the engineer set a charge of dynamite, a big charge. Then they withdraw some distance and group around the instructor. Watch the man at the instructor's feet. He sets off the charge. Ready? And there it goes. Another means of slowing down the enemy. And now, down in the crater for a close view of what the explosion did. And that's the way it happened. While some of their mates provide machine gun protection, the engineers use old-fashioned shovels and modern pneumatic equipment to dig a trench. And then the obstacle course, over the pole. And down into the big ditch and up on the opposite side. If anything gets in the way, jump over it. Or go under it, but don't slacken speed through a log tunnel. Ouch! That's a fiber helmet, not a steel one. But he'll keep his head down after this, because that log might just as well have been a bullet. Up and over in one jump and woe unto the man who lands in the middle. Full speed ahead at a crouching run. This is recommended for the waistline. And then the eight-foot wall. Over. We almost didn't make that one. Down onto the opposite side and onto the next obstacle. They fly through the air with the greatest of ease. And then down flat like well-trained turtles, only in a great big hurry. And now up and onto the finish line. That's the obstacle course. One of the helps in making an ordinary fellow into a soldier. And another important part of the toughening process is marching. Long, hard, forced marches at a fast pace with little rest in hot, sultry weather. These rookies have just hiked 20 miles in less than four hours in 100-degree heat, but they swing along, and some of them even can smile. More of the spirit of gopher broke. On Sunday, it's church call. Services are held out of doors in good weather. The men in the combat team represent a wide variety of religions and denominations. Many of them are Buddhists, and they have their own chaplain. Some are Catholic, and many are Protestant. These boys know that one of the things they're fighting to defend is man's right to worship his own God in his own way. It's the end of the day at Camp Shelby, and the combat team forms for retreat, with the colors presented to the honor company. The commanding officer and his staff review the entire unit, the Yamamoto's, the Janakas, the Kanazawas, the Satos, numbering into the thousands. The boys with Japanese names, Japanese faces, but with minds, hearts, and spirits that are enthusiastically, earnestly American. 
They're trained to make their contribution to victory for democracy and all that democracy means. Tolerance, freedom, and equal opportunity regardless of race or ancestry. They will be amply ready to achieve this victory. In their training and in any combat action which they may see later, they'll spare nothing. They live their motto, go for broke.